good news. I totally forgot that Heel Wife had to take the kids to dancing school today, so she's out of the house for like two hours. So now I'm able to upload this video, and I'm able to upload my wrestling match video to the wrestling channel. And then uh, tonight I'm going to stay at Super Graham's house. And then uh, tomorrow, maybe I'll try to get back in here. Who the hell knows what's going to happen? So one like equals one prayer for that. But now here's the Raw Reactions video that I made earlier for you guys in full HD. What's up, everybody? It's Grim, your YouTube Wrestling Figures Heavyweight Champion. And if you see my video from yesterday, during Monday Night Raw, you've seen that heel wife was being a pure pain in the ass period mode hurricane. She completely smashed up my PS4 game and a Transformer. And I, I was like trying to watch Raw and it was all getting ruined. And now I'm going to do my Raw reactions for the September 19th, 2016 episode. But I'm just so mentally messed up right now. And, and then I came to Target right here. They have nothing at Target. So let's just go outside and let's talk about Raw. Okay, so Raw starts right off addressing the controversies from last week. Roman Reigns comes out. Mm -mm. Smiley, Leisure McTag. He's super salty, Roman Reigns. Because last week, he got cost his match by Machka, Machka, Machka Rusev and Rollins. So, Foley comes out. Step on me, McMuffin comes out. There's a Foley chant going. And Stephanie McMahon is going full cringe with this Foley chant. She kind of sounds like a mom who's trying to be hip, but she ain't hip. It's brutal, people. Out comes Kevin Owens. Out comes Rollins. It's a big menagerie. Kevin Owens is going to go one-on-one -on -one tonight against Roman Reigns inside of the solid steel cage. Which, spoiler alert, has already been hanging from the ceiling. But... The Universal title will not be on the line. And meanwhile, Rollins is going to pay for the shit he pulled last week because Foley is pissed. But he's going to go easy on him and just have him fight Rusev. So wait a minute now. We're going to have Rollins versus Owens and Rollins versus Rusev. Owens and Rusev are bad guys. They're the heels. So does that mean Seth Rollins face turn confirmed? That's it! He's a good guy now! People are popping for Rollins! <laughs> Rollins is a good guy now. So, okay, cool. Everybody's cheering for his ass. He's gonna go one-on-one -on -one with Rusev Machkia. And they put on this awesome match, two or three segments long, and then no winner. They go outside of the ring. They're rumbling by the commentator's table. Michael Cole's like, oh my god, this is the greatest action ever in the history of our sport. And the match ends with Rollins doing a big dive off the commentator's table onto Machka, Machka, Machka. And then that, that was it. It was just double, double cunt out. The two cunts got counted out, and people were pissed. Why? Because they didn't actually finish the match. We like to see endings. I, 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 guess, I guess they'll save that because that's a pretty good match. They'll probably save that for a paper screw down the road. And then the main event. We got to see Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens in the Solid Steel Cage non-universal title matchup. And of course, Rusev Muchka and Rollins have to get involved, but not until after the match ends. Roman Reigns escapes before Kevin Owens. I hate escape from the cage. I fucking hate escape from the cage. The whole point of the steel cage is to keep cocksuckers out. The ones who interfered in the matchup last week, right? The steel cage should keep those assholes out. You should fight inside the steel cage. One, two, three, four, finish. If the whole point of the match is to escape the goddamn cage, how come once the bell rings, it's not a race to see who can get out of the cage first? Spoiler alert, Roman's gonna win because he's a lot more athletic than my little diabetic buddy, Kevin Owens, right? You know, he's just, he's gonna be able to escape faster. He's the better physical specimen. Poop, why the fuck fight for 40 minutes or half hour or 20 minutes or, God damn it, <laughs> dudes in there are just killing it. Anyhow, why the hell fight for all that time when you would just try to run out? That's how the match ended up anyway. Owen's trying to crawl out the door. Fatty, fatty, two by four, can't fit through the steel cage door. Meanwhile, Roman Reigns just jumps off the top and he wins. But of course, muchka, 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 muchka. Here comes Rusev, drags Roman's greasy ass back into the ring, and him and Owen start kicking the crap out of Roman Reigns inside the solid steel cage, and they actually put a chain and a lock on the door so nobody could get in. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Rollins for the save. Rollins is saving Roman? All three members of the Shield are now, wait, no, no, because Dean turned heel. <laughs> I was gonna say they're all good guys now, but Dean kind of turned heel. Oh, wait a minute now, here comes Rollins. What's Rollins gonna do? He climbs on top of the cage. <gasps> Cross body block on those two, and then Raw goes over. That was it. What? Why would you end Raw with four men locked inside of a steel cage? I want to see what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Tune in next time to Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Lousy ending. Trying to set up for Clash of Champions, the pay-per-view coming up this week. And, and, and 
you left me wanting more. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I want more, I guess I'll see it on the paper. Screw. Drink it in, man. It's the list of Jericho. It's his little list of grievances against the failing fuck Foley. And then, of course, he gets interrupted by Enzo and Cass and the New Day and the Shining Farts and Carl Underpants and Puke Gallows. And we have a plethora of tag teams in the ring. So if Jericho says, well, I'm going to add all you stupid idiots to my list of Jericho, he's leaving Sami Zayn attacks. The whole segment was just set up for the next segment, which was going to be a big five on five matchup. We got the good guy teams and Sami Zayn versus the bad guy teams and Jericho. It was a pretty good match, but kind of pointless. Nothing really on the line, just kind of a grudge match. They're kicking the crap out of each other. And in the end, the matchup ends with the boom, boom, shakalaka, whatever the hell Enzo and Cass call it. I like calling it the rocket launcher. <laughs> Cass just slings Enzo right onto one of the shining farts. <laughs> One, two, three, the good guy team wins. Oh, more awesome jobber match action as brown ass blow man beats the crap out of Sankara. Bo Dallas beats up another jobber. What are they doing with Bo Dallas getting squash matches? Nobody wants to see this, I promise you. There's not one person. Okay, well, there is. A couple people last week, fuck your grandma and subscribe. I love Bo Dallas. Really? Really? Okay, okay. I respect your opinion as I ask you to respect mine. We had some women's action. This was kind of cool because last week, remember that whole double pin thing? And I'm like, they didn't even mention it when Sasha pinned Bailey, but both their shoulders were down. Okay, so this week, Dana Broke brings it up to Foley, and Foley's like, oh, yeah, 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 good idea. Actually, we'll have a triple threat at the Clash of Champions. And Charlotte goes in period mode on Dana Brooke. She's really mad. But then they got to team up tonight to go up against Sasha Banks and Bailey. And this was, again, a pretty cool match, but kind of pointless. Grudge match? Okay, I kind of get the grudge thing, but you gotta settle the grudge at the paper screw for the title, too, stupid. Okay, who cares? In the end, Dana Broke actually helps Charlotte win the matchup when Bailey goes for the Bailey to Bailey suplex, but Dana Broke grabs Charlotte's leg. She's like, no, you're not gonna flip my horse looking face friend over. You're not gonna do it. And then Charlotte. <laughs> Nails Bailey with a solid steel knee to the face. One, two, three. The bad guys win. And Sasha looked a little mad. She was a little peeved. Fuck you, Grandma. And subscribe. Talk about the cruiserweights. I know. I know. Why the hell did they leave the cruiserweight segment for the end of the show? You could have put that at the beginning. Started off real hot. Well, I mean, I guess Rusev and Rollins started it off hot, but there was no conclusion to that match. Here with the cruiserweights debuting on Raw, we're going to have a fatal four way. Then the winner will be the number one contender for the TJ Perkins, who is the Cruiserweight Champion, who didn't appear on Raw. We had Foley in the ring. Foley is in the ring, introducing the Cruiserweight division one at a time. Rich Swan comes out first, which kind of looks like a brand new, young, athletic Kofi Kingston. And then we have Grand Metalik, which is kind of like a Rey Mysterio replacement. Then we have Cedric Alexander. And then finally, the return of Brian Kendrick. Now, of course, he's been in WWE for a while. He's been training people in NXT. He was in the Cruiserweight Classic. But now, Brian Kendrick back on Raw confirmed. This is gonna be cool. This is gonna be great and sure as shit with a bunch of flippy dudes high flying action the only kind of stuff you're gonna see on raw except also on lucha underground you're gonna see this epic cruiserweight match and your winner in the end is brian kendrick and he will go on to face tj perkins who just wasn't on raw why was tj perkins not on raw you're introducing a division and you're not even gonna show us the fucking champ i get okay we've seen him on the cruiserweight classic on the network but how many fans have the network and actually watch that I did, but still, not everybody does. You should have at least introduced him to your raw audience. Da, da, da. So they book a pay-per-view match for this weekend. Brian Kendrick, the debuting guy, versus a guy you've never even seen on Raw right now, and people are supposed to be excited for that. I mean, I am at least, but the casual fan? Eh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Oh boy, the best of seven series rolls on as Cesaro goes up against Shitmiss for the sixth time. Cesaro finally pulls it off, and they're tied through to through. Now I kind of feel like Bubba Ray, like through the <laughs> three to three, they're tied, and guess what? Uh, now I guess they're going to settle the score at the paper screw, right? And uh, who's going to win? I don't know. I'll do my predictions coming up right here on this channel, probably Thursday night.
Other than that, they showed a really cool Hispanic Heritage Month uh, salute to Eddie Guerrero. And it's just, you look at that promo package and you're like, my God, Eddie Guerrero was awesome. Friggin' love that dude. We miss Eddie. All right, P. One like equals one prayer. Two shares equals two prayers for Eddie Guerrero. Um, they showed a battle cow package for Nia Jax. So she's going up against Alicia Fox at the paper screw. And uh, I think that's pretty much it that happened on Raw. Fuck your grim. You forgot to talk about. Well, may maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, a lot of shit happened. And like I said with Heel Life, if you missed that video, please go back and check it out. She smashed up my shit and people are pissed. And now there's a brand new Heel Life 1030 shirt for sale on the Pro Wrestling Tea store because that's what time she makes me go to bed. 10.30 p.m. Heel Life 1030 says I'm going to put your ass to bed. I thank you guys for watching. Please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe for more. Group out.